Hello friends, welcome to the world of project management and for an overview session on project integration management process that is develop project management plan. Motto of this training is to share my experience in preparing for PMP certification and have prepared few slides. Let's quickly move to our agenda for this session that we are going to discuss on what is develop project management plan and its ITTOs in more detail that is inputs, tools and techniques and outputs. Let's start. It is the second process in the project integration management and it is defined as develop project management plan is the process of defining, preparing and coordinating all the planned components and consolidating them into an integrated project management plan. The key benefit of this process is the production of a comprehensive document that defines the basis of all the project work and how the work will be performed. Okay, hope you understood its definition and the key benefit of this process. Let's quickly go with its ITTOs in detail. In inputs, we have the project charter, outputs from the other processes, enterprise environmental factors, and organizational process assets. And coming to the tools and techniques, we have expert judgment, data gathering techniques, which consisting of the brainstorming, checklist, focus groups, and interviews. And also we have the interpersonal and team skills, which contains the conflict management, facilitation, and meeting management. And also we have the meetings in the tools and techniques. Coming to the outputs, we have only one output that is project management plan. Okay, fine. This is just an overview of the ITTOs. Let's discuss its ITTOs in more detail, starting with first inputs. And inputs first, we have the project charter. The project team uses the project charter as a starting point for initial project planning. And the type and the amount of information in the project charter varies depending on the complexity of the project and the information known at the time of its creation. This is about the project charter. Okay, hope you understood about this first input. Let's move to the next input. We have outputs from the other processes. That is, outputs from many of the other processes are integrated to create this project management plan. And these subsidiary plans and baselines that are an output from the other planning processes are also considered inputs to this process. Okay, hope you understood this input. Let's move to the next input. We have enterprise environmental factors. In this EFs, it may contain the government or industry standards. It may contain the legal and re regulatory requirements or constraints, or it may contain the project management body of language, body of knowledge for vertical market, or it may contain the organizational structure, culture, management practices, and sustainability, or it may contain the organizational governance framework and the infrastructure. Okay, hope you understood about this EFs. Let's move to the organizational process assets that is OPS. In the OPS, it may contain some organizational standard policies, procedures, and processes, or it may contain the change control procedures that including the steps by which the official organization standards policies plans procedures or any project documents that it may include the monitoring and the reporting methods or it may include some risk control procedures or it may include some communication requirements and also it includes the project information from the previous similar projects and the historical information and lessons learned repository okay hope you understood about this input and here we have completed all the inputs of the project management plan let's move to its tools and techniques in the tools and techniques first we have the expert judgment the expertise should be considered here from the individuals or groups with some specialized knowledge or training in few of the areas such as the expertise should be considered in tailoring the project management processes to meet the project needs or it includes the dependencies and interactions among those processes and the essential inputs and outputs and the expertise they should have knowledge in developing the additional components of the project management plan if needed or 
the expertise should have knowledge in determining the tools and techniques to be used for accomplishing those processes or the expertise should have knowledge in developing the technical and management details to be included in the project management plan or the expertise should have knowledge in determining the resources and skill levels needed to perform the project work or the expertise should have knowledge in defining the level of configuration management to apply on the project or the expertise should have knowledge on the determining which project documents will subject to the formal change control processes and prioritizing the work on the project to ensure the project resources are allocated to the appropriate work at the appropriate time so in all these areas the expertise should have knowledge for this process okay hope you understood about this first technique the expert judgment let's move to the next technique we have data gathering techniques which contains the brainstorming checklist focus groups and interviews let me explain one by one that is first with brainstorming this brainstorming is frequently used when developing the project management plan to gather the ideas and solutions about the project approach okay moving to the checklist a checklist may guide the project manager to develop the plan or may it help to verify that all the required information is included in the project management plan okay hope you understood this checklist moving to the focus groups mainly these focus groups bring together all the stakeholders to discuss the project management approach and also the integration of the different components of the project management plan okay hope you understood about these focus groups let's move to the interviews mainly these interviews are used to obtain some specific information from the stakeholders to develop the project management plan or any component plan or any project document okay hope you understood about this data gathering technique let's move to the next technique we have interpersonal and team skills which consisting of the conflict management facilitation and the meeting management let me explain one by one first with conflict management this technique the conflict management may be necessary to bring the diverse stakeholders to into an alignment on all the aspects of the project management plan okay hope you understood this moving to facilitation this technique the facilitation ensures that there is effective participation that the participants achieve a mutual understanding and that all the contributions are considered and also that conclusions or results have full in full buy in according to the decision process established for the project okay hope you understood about this facilitation moving to meeting management this technique meeting management is necessary to ensure that the numerous meetings that are necessary to develop unify and agree on the project management plan are all well run okay hope you understood about this meeting management fine let's move to the next technique we have meetings this technique meetings are mainly used to discuss the project approach determine how the work will be executed to accomplish the project objectives and also it is used to establish the way the project will be monitored and controlled okay and also the project kick off meetings are usually associated with the end of the planning and start of the executing and its purpose is to communicate the objectives of the project gain the commitment of the team for the project and explain the rules and responsibilities of each stakeholder okay hope you understood this and also along with this the kick off meetings may occur at different points in time depending on the characteristics of the project that is for small projects there is usually only one team that performs the planning and the execution and in the large projects a project management team normally does the majority of the planning and the remainder of the project team is brought on when the initial planning is complete at the start of the development or implementation okay hope you understood about this meeting so also here we have completed all the tools and techniques of this project management plan process let's move to its outputs that is in outputs we have only one output as i said it is project management plan let me explain what is the short put the project management plan is the document that describes how the project will be executed monitored and controlled and last closed 
and it integrates and consolidates all the subsidiary management plans and baselines and also the other information necessary to manage the project hope you understood this and this project management plan components includes the, the subsidiary management plan baselines and additional components let's start one by one first with subsidiary management plans first with scope management plan mainly the scope management plan establishes how the scope will be defined developed monitored controlled and validated next moving to requirements management plan this requirements management plan establishes how the requirements requirements will be analyzed documented and managed coming to the schedule management plan the schedule management plan establishes the criteria and the activities for developing monitoring and controlling the schedule okay moving to cost management plan this cost management plan establishes how the cost will be planned structured and controlled coming to quality management plan this quality management plan establishes how an organization's quality policies methodologies and standards will be implemented in the project moving to resource management plan this resource management plan mainly provides a guidance on how the project resources should be categorized allocated managed and released coming to communication management plan this communication management plan establishes how when and whom information about the project will be administered and disseminated okay moving to risk management plan this risk management plan establishes how the risk management activities will be structured and performed for the project moving to the procurement management plan this procurement management plan establishes how the project team will acquire the goods and services from outside of the performing organization coming to stakeholder engagement plan the stakeholder engagement plan establishes how the stakeholders will be engaged in project decisions and execution with respect to their needs interest and impact okay this is about the subsidiary management plans and coming to the baselines we have the scope schedule and cost baselines and coming to the last the additional components in the additional components we have the change management plan configuration management plan performance measurement baseline project life cycle development approach and the management reviews okay these are the components of the project management plan okay hope you understood about all this in outputs of this develop project management plan process fine so we have completed all the attitudes that is inputs tools and techniques and outputs of develop project management plan process this completes our second process session on the project integration management knowledge area and hope this complete session is easy and understandable fine let's discuss more detail on the next process in this project integration management that is direct and manage project work in the next video kindly provide your feedback on the given email id and subscribe my channel if you like this video bye for now it's your anil kumar dharam